Hello, Dandelions! The story of Baba Yaga is one of the most striking horror tales in Eastern European folklore. The wicked witch of Slavic folklore kidnaps children and bakes them on her stove for dinner in her famous movable property. What if I'm going to tell you that there is more to her story? What if I tell you that this incredible woman has a full-time job as a guide to the underworld and has connections to the Amazons? Or that she existed in real life? Prepare your tea and a warm blanket and watch the stove. We are about to start another episode of Slavic Bestiary. Baba Yaga is a witch who possesses magical artifacts and is endowed with supernatural powers. She lives deep in the woods, in the underworld Nav, near the Fire River and the Kalina Bridge. Her house with chicken legs is surrounded by a fence and instead of pots, hanging skulls. At least, that is what we heard in tales. South and north of the Slavic community have their own version of Baba Yaga. Still, the time and circumstances called baptism rebranding change this folklore character so much. There are a lot of aspects to cover, so we will start from afar. How would you imagine Baba Yaga? Probably like an old woman with an unpleasant appearance, but she wasn't like that all the time. The noun Baba became slang, meaning an elderly woman, aka Babushka. Currently, it isn't a polite way to refer to a woman. The word's original meaning is any woman, or a peasant woman in particular. Yaga on its own has many references and often represents unpleasant things. There is a theory that Yaga or Yaga means snakes or vipers. According to the legend, Baba Yaga recommended Velis to steal the heavenly cows from Slavic heaven Prath. So he did. Fine gods who live in Prath got mad and cursed Yaga. One of her shiny golden boots became a bony leg. Her eternal youth and beauty faded and she became the woman we know today. No matter how hard Baba Yaga tried to lift the curse, she couldn't regain what she had lost, even with her knowledge. Baba Yaga has legs for both worlds, the human realm and the underworld. Neither human nor dead. Baba Yaga limps, so she uses a mortar and broom as her personal carriage or rides a horse or boar to move around comfortably. Yaga's hut, standing on the edge of two worlds, is a gate to the Slavic underworld Nav. In Tales, the hero asks the hut to turn around, so the door would face the human world instead of the underworld. There is another interesting cultural reference to the hut with chicken legs. In the northern Slavic tribes, there was a custom to bury the deceased above the ground, not underground. Due to the climate, the land was freezing stone or the terrain was swampy. So the Slavs would build crypt houses on stumps and put the idol of a woman next to them to look after their relatives. Baba Yaga can shapeshift into anything, transform you into anything, send a powerful curse, deprive you of life, and etc. She is a big footy with numerous valuable magical artifacts, such as seven league boots, a magic carpet, the sword Kladinets, the clue, and the goosely Samagudy. Watch my top 10 magical artifacts in Slavic Fairy Tales episode to learn more about the artifacts. I'm sure everyone at this point heard of Baba Yaga's creepy food habits. Surprisingly, there is a reasonable explanation behind this story. The ritual of Piripikanya or Piripok was done exclusively on a stove called Pechka. An infirm or sick child was washed with spring water, wrapped in dough and put into a warm, clean oven, which had previously been heated with herbs. The child was baked, aka reborn, so he or she would pass the sickness to the dough and be reborn healthy. It was the best cure for the illness in the northern climate. This rite could be done only by a knowledgeable woman, the priestess healer, because only she knew the special dough recipe and could perform the ritual. Also, Pechka was a core part of another Slavic ritual, 
the initiation. In many tales, the hero comes to Baba Yaga to save his friend, bride, the world, etc., and she assigns him or her to do tasks, typically household chores. If the hero proved themselves worthy, he or she was rewarded with magical artifacts and advice. That is the point. In short, Slavic kids who are about to grow up come to Baba Yaga's hut to pass the initiation test and become adults. Baba Yaga is no other than the combined representation of all Slavic tribes' priestesses, the legacy of the matriarchal past. With time and rebranding, this ritual became a horror tale for kids. If you didn't notice, there was a time when Eastern European lands were blessed with a matriarchal society. It was good times, good times, please bring it back. And there is comes another side of Baba Yaga with even more cultural references. Some fairy tales mention that Baba Yaga has an iron chest, which is nothing but battle armor. She needs that in tales where she is the antagonist and the big boss a hero has to fight. In the South Slavic version, fairy tales mention that Baba Yaga has an underground kingdom in far, far away land. It is described as the land beyond the steppe river, among the silken grasses, and by the spring water near the sea. It is fair to say that the underground kingdom is based on the tribes of Amazon warriors who live near the current sea of Azov. Baba Yaga owns herds of cattle and magical horses in that version, and the hero's goal is to get the horses. She is the snake mother who commands the army of dark forces and fights with Slavic warriors Bagadiri to seek revenge for her murdered snake sons. Sometimes she has her daughters and daughters-in-law, who help her to get rid of the hero with temptations. Usually they fail in tales, but I respect the soft powerhouse Tarel move. We can only track some traces and references in folklore, because Baba Yaga covered them with a broom when she traveled in a mortar. But during my research for the Tanais episode, I went to the museum, saw the prototype of the mortar, the Sarmatian pot. I even have a picture of it, but I couldn't add it to the Tanais episode. Do you understand? I saw the prototype of Baba Yaga's mortar. You can see it too now, and use it as a reference. Anyway, my lyrical digression dedicated to getting excited about the ancient pot is over. Let's keep moving on. There are many things I didn't emphasize in the episode, like whether Baba Yaga is a daughter of Fi or not, whether she is the wife of Velis or not, whether she is a sister or sometimes a mother of Zmi or not. Baba Yaga's mythological family tree is complicated, because there are too many versions at this point. But the canon entails is only one. Baba Yaga is a strong and independent woman of Slavic folklore, either a harmless and helpful grandmother or an evil witch, depending on the mood, echo of the matriarchal roots and a heritage that we should keep and cherish, no matter how terrifying it seems at first glance. And so far we have done an excellent job on the cheering part. Baba Yaga is one of the most famous characters of Slavic folklore in Slavic and Western media. She frequently appears in Studio Melnitsa cartoons, and her story has been adapted by Smite, Ever After High, Hellboy, and many others. I'm sure there is more to come. Maybe what we've learned today will inspire creators to show Baba Yaga from another perspective. Wow, that was a lot of words. Are you less scared now to meet Baba Yaga in Tales? Which part of Baba Yaga's origin you found the most surprising, Dandelions? Tell me in the comments. And for now, stay warm.